All right, so this video is going over body paragraph three, the foil paragraph. Now, to be clear, this paragraph is optional. If you don't want to write this paragraph, you just go ahead and skip to body paragraph four, which will become your body paragraph three. Um, the reason I'm making this optional is because I was going to shorten the essay a little bit for um, distance learning, but some people had already written it or already started, so I wanted to reward the people who had worked ahead, but at the same time um, make things a little bit easier for people who hadn't. Now, I personally don't think this paragraph is very hard to write, but it is sort of the least essential to this essay. So the purpose of this paragraph says, Compare your character with their foil. Each character has at least one clear foil. A foil is a character who is introduced to provide a contrast to a main character and to highlight the main character's traits. Examples. And then I gave you a list of who are the foils. Now, this is the presentation I gave you guys in class to teach you foils. So I'm going to link this again in the classroom. I'm going to go ahead and in this document that I'm working on. So it's right here. Basically, the purpose of this paragraph is you are going to compare and contrast your character with his or her foil, and then you want to make a connection to how your character will eventually change. All right, so. Um, because I am doing my paragraph on a maca, I'm kind of doing a reverse type thing. A maca is the foil, so mine's a little bit different. But I'm going to pretend like um, a foil doesn't have to be a main character. Um, I'm going to pretend, I'm going to ignore the part of um, the definition that says, like, the main character can't be a foil, um, just so that this is easy. All right, so I am. This whole paragraph is going to be comparing and contrasting Cambili and Amaka. Now, oh, since it's been about a day since I wrote my last paragraph, it's the best practice is to go back and reread it quickly so that I know how to make my essay flow so that I continue from the same idea. All right, so my body paragraph two is about how when they reunited, they didn't get along. Amaka thought that Cambili was spoiled. And I already kind of talked about how they were different. Okay, topic sentence. So I want to start. Um, I want to start with a transition. Okay. And so a great transition phrase here because I'm elaborating on the differences in these two characters would be an exchange. To the um, differences in their families. In addition to the differences in their families, well, Maka and Kabili. So then I'm going to think about what would be really good evidence to show this. And I remember from the book on Christmas Day, um, when they're all having lunch together, how Amaka just talks to Papa and Kambili is so shocked. So I'm going to write a little intro to that and then I'm going to go find it in the book. All right. On Christmas Day, when the extended family meets lunch together, Amaka shocks Kambili. Speaking. 
Okay, so now I gotta go find my evidence. How do I find my evidence? Um, I would go to classroom. I would go to where Ms. Klein, aka me, posted full text. Now I made the video that reviews chapters for you. I'm gonna have that up and running soon. It's it's no, it already is posted. I just haven't posted it in classroom. Okay, so I know Christmas is chapter seven, it's chapter six. So I use last, the last paragraph, Christmas is chapter seven. All right, and like I showed you in the last video, the way that I'm going to find this part about Amaka is just I'm going to hit control F, control F, and then I'm going to um, look for the name Amaka. All right, and then I'm gonna just hit this down button until I find it's coming. Until I find um, the evidence that I want. Okay. All right, so this is at much of Martha's talking. She wishes Amaka would keep her voice low. She's not used to this kind of conversation. Then Auntie Fuma says that she comes in second. Probably, uh uh. That's a good thing. So Maka asks her uncle if he's heard about Aokpe, and then Kim Bealey says, I wondered how Amaka did it, how she opened her mouth and had words flow easily out. All right, that's my evidence because that shows a clear difference between them. All right. Oh, let me see what page that was on. Ninety-nine. Okay, that's easy for me. Okay. After Amaka asks Papa if he has heard of the visions of the. Thanks. I wondered how Maka did it, how she opened her mouth and had words flow easily out. So that's my evidence. So now I'm going to explain it. All right. So I started my topic sentence by talking about the differences in their personalities. Yeah. 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 
Okay, so now I explained how the Kambili is um why Kambili is the oh, sorry the puppy's biting me under the desk. Okay, so now I explained why Kambili is puzzled by Maka. Now I'm gonna tie this back and I'm gonna tie it back to my thesis statement about um Amaka's thinking of Kambili as a single story. Okay, so to Amaka and Kambili's classmates, Kambili's silence comes across as snobbery. Now I feel like I've already said this in a previous paragraph, but we're just going to go with it. We can edit everything later. Can be silence comes across as snobbery because they cannot conceive the life where they would be abused to to the point where silence is their only silence is a survival survival. Okay, so I have a paragraph. Let me copy it and take all these little Helpers out and we could see how it sounds. I realize some of my fonts are different sizes and things like that. I would go back and fix that when I do my final draft. It's not that big of a deal right now. This is just a rough draft. I'm just trying to see if this all makes sense together. Okay. In addition to the differences in their family's wealth, wealth. I, I don't like that. I really want to change that word. So let's go to define wealth. Affluence, prosperity, opulence, riches, substance, luxury. Possessions is good because satellite TV and stuff like that. So I'm going to go with finances and possessions. Because I feel like that fits more with what I'm trying to say. Because remember, the last paragraph was all about like satellite TV and having it or not. I feel like that fits better. Okay, in addition to the differences in their family's finances and possessions, Amaka and Kimbili have vastly different personalities. On Christmas Day, when the extended family eats lunch together, Amaka shocks Kimbili by speaking directly to Papa. After Amaka asks Papa if he has heard of the visions of the Virgin Mary and Ayaki, Kimbili thinks, I wonder how Amaka did it, how she opened her mouth, and how the words flow easily out. So that's my evidence. Throughout the novel, Kambili has struggled to speak and has been mostly silent. She has not yet realized that her behavior is a result of Papa's abuse. So when she is around a normal teenager like Amaka, she is a confused by Amaka's behavior. Now, I didn't like the word normal the first time, so I'm just going to say well adjusted, which I don't love either, but I just don't like the word normal. However, the reader is more confused by Kambili. I don't think I need to say that Amaka than Kambili because it's more confused by Kambili because she seems abnormal. All right, I'm going to take this part out because I know I used this exact phrase in my clincher last 
paragraph, Kambili silence comes across as snobbery because most people cannot conceive of a life where they would be abused to the point where silence is a tool for survival. Okay. So I think like I think I actually don't have a clincher because I want to tie this back to Amaka and Kambili. So let me add one. By the end of the novel, Kambili will Amaka. Let's choose my focus. Amaka will inspire and be to open up and let her words flow easily. Now, right here, I've used this exact same phrase from this quote. I don't have to put the 99 again because I already did that. Okay, so I can use this phrase from this quote again without the page number because I already cited it. Okay, so that is body paragraph three, comparing a foil. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes some sense. Now remember this one is optional. Um, there's not really any kind of like consequence to not doing it. You just wouldn't get like an A++. But I mean, that makes sense because you would have written one less paragraph than your peers. So it's not like I'm gonna be subtracting eight points off your essay. Off, like off the top, um, you just won't get that super high grade. Okay. All right. Hopefully this helps.